So what's new in the world of private equity for 2019? Well, the newest news is that there actually isn't a lot of new news, frankly. It's kind of still the best of times. It's a decade now of continuation of trend of lots of deal making, good returns, good exits, and lots of cash coming back to LPs, which is being channeled back into GP coffers in the forms of very attractive fundraising markets. So let's break those down one at a time as we think about what's happened so far in 2019. On the investment side, pricing remains very high, and that's the biggest barrier to getting deals done. In fact, we're seeing pricing starting to bifurcate a little bit. In the US, we're at all time record highs uh, in terms of the price for a dollar of earnings at about 11.2 times EBITDA. In Europe, we've actually seen a slight amelioration of prices down to just under 10 times or about 9.7 times EBITDA. So concerns over Brexit, concerns over Eurozone issues, potential recessionary situations in Germany and Italy may have dampened the enthusiasm for pricing just a touch in Europe, although it remains quite high by historical standards. But in the US, clearly, it's full steam ahead and the pricing of assets certainly reflects that in the market. Another trend that we've continued to see accelerate over time is the public to private trend. As many of you know, private multiples have exceeded public multiples for the same dollar of earnings for several years in a row. And investors have noticed this and are perfectly willing to pay premiums for public companies that are actually excellent values compared to their private counterparts. So we've seen an increase in the count of public to private deals in 2019. And we expect to see close to an all time high in terms of number of public to privates touching close to the 2007 record. Let's now turn our attention to exits. The exit markets again are continuing trend with 2018 and 2017. By count, they are relatively strong and by value right in line with the last couple of years. Exit markets remain a little bit challenged by the fact that strategics are not as big a part of the exit story as they generally have been in the past. Corporate M&A is softer than it has been in 2018 and 2017, owing mostly to macro concerns globally, worries about future earnings, worries about growth. But the overall exit picture remains bright. Sponsor to sponsor transactions are up, uh, floats on the public market remain quite strong. And so conditions are good to put money back into LP coffers. And we expect that to continue through the balance of the year. One other thing to note about continuation of trend for exits in 2019 is the continued decline of holding periods. The average holding period in 2019 dropped to about 4.4 years. And this has been a trend that has continued downward since 2012, where we had an average hold of about seven years for, for assets that were on the books. Many of those acquired pre the Great Recession of 2008, 2009. But the number of quick flips, and we define quick flips at Bain as a company that's been held for three years or less, continues to be very low uh, compared to pre-recession levels. Only about 25% of deals that GPs are doing are being put back to market and cashed in in under three years. And that remains well below the 40 or 45% levels we are seeing pre-crisis. As you can imagine, the healthy exit activity for now the sixth year in a row is filling LP coffers with lots of cash. In fact, we continue to see a net distribution of more cash coming back into LP wallets than are being called by GPs doing deals. This is the 10th year in a row that we've seen that phenomenon take place. And as a result, the demand for more exposure to private equity is only going up. In fact, we're about to forecast that 2019 may well be the peak year ever for fundraising for buyouts. Uh, with many large funds in the market having raised Blackstone a record 26 billion, Advent, other very large mega funds having done quite well in the marketplace. It's caused a spike in the fundraising dollars for the year. But the reality is many, many funds are doing well because we still have this secular trend of more dollars coming back into LP pockets than GPs are calling to do new investments. And lastly, none of this story would be complete without talking about returns. Returns continue to be very strong across all geographies and all sizes in buyouts and in the private equity asset class writ large. It still continues to be the highest performing asset class in many LP portfolios. And as long as this is the case, and as long as cash continues to flow into LP wallets faster than it's demanded by the GP counterparts in order to do deals, we are going to see a very strong environment from private equity going forward.